In this episode, I show an Excel example of calculating the portfolio standard deviation of returns and the value at risk for three positions. Stay tuned. Darwin X is a UK FCA regulated broker and asset manager on a mission to disrupt the financial trading, investing and asset management industries. If you're a talented trader looking to attract investor capital to your strategies, Darwin X is the fastest way for you to do this. We enable traders to raise third party investor capital and then charge success fees on high watermark profits. Additionally, Darwin X itself invests in its traders with our seed capital allocation program that allocates up to 90 million euros per year in successful trading strategies. So if all of that sounds interesting, learn more by clicking on the link here, or you can find further links in the description right below. Now back to today's tutorial. If you search for tutorials to help you calculate the standard deviation of returns and the value at risk in Excel, almost all of these use just one or two assets. And of course, I showed this myself a few episodes ago as I was building up through the required knowledge. But just two positions isn't real world, right? What we really need to do is calculate it for any number of positions. And so today I go one step further than the vast majority of other tutorials and do this for three positions. In the episode that follows this, I'll code this in MQL5 for any number of positions. Let's make a start. So I'm going to start off where I left last time when we did this for just two positions. And if you remember, we did it for Aussie CAD and Pound CAD. And this was the expression that we used in order to calculate the portfolio standard deviation. But of course, now with three assets, the equation becomes somewhat more complex. And if this looks unfamiliar to you, I suggest you watch the previous episode where I explain this in a lot more detail. And to access any previous episodes in this particular series, you can go to a link in the description right below the video that will take you to the playlist and an ordered list of episodes in the series. But before we get into this calculation here, and I'll just delete this one, I've added the data here for an additional position, which in this case is Euro Yen. So what I then need to do is to calculate the daily returns for this asset. So I'm just going to copy that straight from the pound CAD example. And as you can see, that's brought those calculations across, which is just the current close divided by the previous close minus one. And I'm going to do exactly the same for the individual standard deviation of returns and the individual value at risk for this one position on its own. So if I just change the terminology here to Euro Yen and the same for the value at risk. Now you'll notice that the standard deviation of returns has been calculated on those daily returns that we see here, but the value at risk is coming through as zero. And the reason for that is because we haven't yet given a monetary value to this amount. So I'm just going to change this to cell P5. And this then is where we can put that monetary amount. And let's start off with it at the same as the other two, at £10,000. And so you can see that the total amount invested has been automatically calculated as the, the sum of those. So let's just convert that to a currency. Okay. And we also just need to create a waiting cell for this. And that, if you remember, is the individual investment amount divided by the total. 
And so for this one, we need to just change the P7 to P6. And because we've got equal monetary amounts, of course, we've also got equal weightings here at 0.3 recurring. Now, in the previous calculation, we only needed to calculate one correlation coefficient, and that was the coefficient between the two positions that we had. But if you remember in the previous episode with three positions, there are actually three correlation coefficients that we need to calculate. So I'm just going to cut these values here so that I can add those correlation coefficients below the one we did last time. So if you remember, this was calculated using an inbuilt Excel function called Coral, and it simply looked at the correlation of the returns from one position compared with the returns from the other. And to make this a little bit easier now, I'm, instead of naming these, I'm just going to say that this is the correlation between position one and position two, and then We'll have this one for the correlation between position two, position three, and this one between one and three. So we can again quickly produce the values that we need. So this needs to be between position two and position three. And this one between position one and position three. And we've calculated the correlation coefficient between every combination of position that we have. So here we have the value for the two asset portfolio. I'm just going to rename this now to our three asset portfolio. If we take a look at the calculation here, if you remember, it was the weight of the first position squared multiplied by the standard deviation of the first one squared, doing that for the first two positions. And then we just had one of these terms here, which is two multiplied by the two weights, the correlation coefficient and the two standard deviations. And as we saw last time, we now have three of these terms. So in terms of the calculation we have here at the top, we already have this one in place. We have this one in place and we have this one in place. So we just need to add these three additional terms to the formula that we see here. So let's just go ahead now and do that. So we need to have the, the weight of the third position multiplied by itself, effectively squared, and then multiplied by the standard deviation of the individual position, also squared. And so that's this term here now in place. Just put a plus in there. And let's now concentrate on these last two. We have two multiplied by weight two and then weight three, which is this multiplied by this, multiplied by the correlation coefficient between two and three, which of course is this value that we have here, multiplied by the standard deviation of position two and the standard deviation of position three. And so again, we now have this term here. So the last one is two times weight one times weight three, which is this multiplied by this, multiplied by the correlation coefficient between positions one and three, which is this one, multiplied by the standard deviation of position one and the standard deviation of position three. Close the bracket and that should be our calculation complete. So let's just do a quick sanity check on the value that we are getting there. It's coming out at 0.3%, which is actually lower than all of the individual standard deviations. But that's exactly what we would expect because of the power of diversification. This is the benefit you get from trading uncorrelated assets. And as we can see here, we have relatively low correlations, all positive in this case, but of course they wouldn't have to be. Sometimes you could have negative correlations and that would actually increase 
the diversification and lower the standard deviation values that we're getting. Now, in terms of the value at risk here, we don't actually need to make any changes at all because as long as we're using this new value for the three asset standard deviation of returns, which you can see we are, we simply multiply the Z score, which is 1.65, by that standard deviation of returns for the portfolio, and then multiply that by the total investment amount, which you can see here, which is 30,000. And so we've now successfully calculated the value at risk for the portfolio, and that's coming out at £153. And if you remember in real terms, in line with the information that Value at Risk provides us with, because we've used that Z score of 1.65, it means that one day out of 20, if we were holding these positions, we could expect a loss of £153 or more. And then for the other 19 days in the 20, we could expect either a smaller loss or indeed a profit. Now, as you can see with the calculation here, it really is becoming quite complex. And so to go above three positions would really take quite some time to produce in Excel. However, in code, as long as we set up our calculation loops properly, then it doesn't really matter whether we are coding this for just three positions or any number of positions. And this is what I'll show you in the next episode. Okay, so please do remember to subscribe to the Darwin X YouTube channel. And by doing that and clicking on the alarm icon, that means you'll be notified whenever a new episode, including the next one, gets released. If by the time you're watching this, it's already been released, then you'll see it top right now. So now, until next time, trade safe.